So welcome to Do Human Work, the podcast that looks at the future of cybersecurity through the lens of AI. I'm Nate Burke, and I am joined, as always, by... Lior Div. Hi, everybody. And we are on the road again. Now, where are we? We are in Atlanta. Okay. And we are at the studio. I don't know if you... Well, I'm going to cut to it, so I'm going to show you this. My view here, we're in a beautiful recording studio here in... Atlanta at Graphic Packaging, and we are being hosted by... I'm John Kester, CISO at Graphic Packaging International. Very nice to have you. Thanks for having me. So actually, it's fantastic setting here. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful building. They did a great job. So, so let, let's dive in, Nate. Let's dive in. Let's dive in. Beautiful. Okay. So the first, first question. First. The first question. And this is the first question we always ask everyone, and this is the magic wand question, which is... If I could take this game show host mic and turn it into a magic wand and I wave the magic wand and I could give you back 25% of your time, what would you do with it? Uh, this one was actually pretty easy for me. Uh, I'd sleep more. A fuck. Okay. 20 uh, bucks? Yeah, I mean, a lot tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, CISO job is not uh, very easy sometimes. Seriously, I think I would, I would like to give back to the community more. I think teaching all the things around cyber usually are dealing with response and technology. And I think what gets left behind a lot of times are development opportunities for the people around you. So that's where I would spend most of my time. It's fascinating because when we're thinking about the Gen AI and it's like everything become kind of some uh, kind of a robotic uh, vision in people's heads. Um, but it's fascinating to hear the, the answer that you just gave is basically because maybe of AI, I will have more time and spend more time with humans that's right. And we'll give back to the community. This is great, actually. I think that it's uh, put a, a very positive point of view of how the future is going to look like. And I'm a, a big believer that the future is going to look better, not worse, to That's be honest. Right. That's right. And I think um, AI takes care of a lot of the, the repetitive tasks, lower level tasks. Um, but cybersecurity is still, to me, a people-focused uh, yeah. capability, right? Where people are defending against attacks. There's on the other side of the attack is a person. The uh, bad guys. That's right. And and one of the, the core responsibilities I think cyber leaders have is to make sure we have a good talent pipeline. So yeah. uh, even targeting middle schools and high schools to talk about cybersecurity as a profession, as a passion, like that matters, but it takes real time to do it right. I'm a big believer that, uh, you know, the human brain uh, will be used to do more creative stuff. And, and we're not going to, use the human brain less, we're actually going to use it more to the thing that it was designed to, to do, solve complex problem, be creative. And I think uh, my expectation that we're going to see a boom of creativity that will come. We're, we're going to talk a lot about AI, uh, no surprise there. But just one question I had, because we were all talking about humans things and, and human creativity and, and that sort of thing and, and giving back. Is there anything that you can think of that you would say, no matter how advanced AI agents get, and AI can take over in security. Are there things that you think that should always be done by humans and, and not done by AI? Um, I go back to human engagement, yeah. right? I think you have to have a, a way to, to interact with your associates, um, your partners, right? AI can't replace that. Uh, but what AI does is allow you to focus more time on that, like I said before. Okay, so what are some of the the, the big thorny cybersecurity challenges that you think that AI could either solve completely or at least put a dent in. Those things that we were talking about and that we were alluding to earlier of those things that we want to get off our plate so that we can do those human things. What are some of the good things that you think are candidates for, hey, AI should take this? Yeah, I mean, I think there's natural applications uh, in detection and response um, and not just um, identifying things better, but, but speeding up the actual response processes and and not full human replacement either, like providing contextual information, uh, helping them to prioritize, giving them uh, with with high uh, efficacy the likely next steps for them to respond uh, in a given incident. I think those are critical. I also believe like uh, there's probably applications in data security, right? Uh, naturally mapping, like uh, there are tools out there that I think do a good job, right? But DLP is is hard to get right. And I think that uh, AI can help us there by learning your environment, what's really true for your particular sets of data. I think there's some applications there as well. well one of the things that's fascinating me is uh, us in cybersecurity, 
uh, we're always dealing with the uh, moving targets. So while we figure something out and we manage to create, let's say, a great product or a great service to, to solve a problem, what's happening, there is a billions that invested on the other side, on the attacker end, and whatever target that we manage to achieve, then the target just move because they figure out a new way to attack us or a new way to manipulate like social engineering. So every time that we're asking this question, I'm, I'm thinking about it's like, okay, but what the bad guys going to do with it and how they are going to use it? Because if we're starting to understand that thing, maybe we will have kind of time to, to, to do something about it before they actually manage to implement it. So. Let's imagine together for a second what, what the bad guy is going to do and use AI for. Oh, so you're asking me. I, I'm kind of asking. <laughs> but you're a good guy. You're not a bad guy. Yeah, I'm the good guy. Um, the simple one, um, uh, speed to, to exploit and weaponize the vulnerability. Period, yeah. Right. Uh, we've already seen impacts of uh, AI and how they more sophisticated phishing emails and those types of Oh, things. yeah. But I think that um, even beyond that, uh, better targeting, like maybe... Mm -hmm maybe recon on a given target, right? That makes those attacks yeah. so much better. And so like social engineering. Yeah, yeah, right, right. But but pulling in all the contextual data that's available for Lior on the internet, yeah. right? Uh, and and how do I use that information to better craft deep fakes or, or social engineering attempts against your employees? All of those things. Yeah, so, so the fascinating thing, and if I'm taking what you just said, it's not really about the new tricks. I'm calling it, it's the old trick, faster, and just better because the old trick do at scale because it, it, it is working for them. So you think about ransomware and ransomware group, they are generating billions. And if they can do it faster and in a more aggressive way, so I think that you're right. They, they will be able to generate more billions in order to invest in, in themselves and in their AI in order to move faster. Right, right. Yeah, I agree. I think, I think that's the point is, uh, it takes time and effort to develop and launch a, an effective yep. attack and to respond if you are able to penetrate an organization. Uh, but if they leverage AI appropriately, then instead of there's a ratio of a one attacker human can to actually target X number of companies, well, that's going to grow exponentially, right? They're much more efficient as well. Yeah. So, so it's like one, one thing that's running in my head always, uh, when we think about nation state, they, we were talking about the low and slow attack. So it's coming low and slow. They don't want to be discovered and, and so on and so forth. But I started to say the, the, the low and slow going to switch to the fast and furious. Right. Because they don't care if they are discovered because they can pound you again and again and again till they find a way in. And then you're, they know that you're not going to have enough time to respond. So they can just, you know, go fast. I think that this is kind of where we need to counter with uh, our fire against fire a little bit. <laughs> That's right. I like that. Yeah. Fire against fire. Yeah. I, I think that by now um, we spoke with a lot of uh, chief security officers uh, here in the U.S. And everybody is kind of uh, saying it's like my team is busy. They are doing all of those tasks. Uh, but then when we start kind of thinking about what if AI can replace a lot of the mundane, boring, repeatable things that are necessary, but, you know, they don't want their people to keep doing it. Basically, what will happen is we're going to give time back to those teams. And then the natural question is like, okay, what is your bucket list? Because nobody is going to let go of anybody. It's like people, they, they have the list. So it's like we start calling it the cybersecurity bucket list. What is on cyber, your cybersecurity bucket list in a sense? Um, at risk of sounding like a broken record, I think <laughs> it is the associate or employee engagement, right? Technology will get beat from time to time. Yes. It's just, a, it's the way it is, right? So having the right relationships, making sure that we're investing time to educate, educate our associates in a real way, an effective way matters. Um, when there's an emergency for them to know somebody in the cybersecurity field, right? To reach out immediately, those things matter. Um, and it's important that we're doing them. So basically it's become uh, a business partner to right. the, the, the business and not just be kind of uh, the department that's saying this is not allowed, this is allowed, and, and so on and so forth. Yeah, the department I know <laughs> is not an yeah. effective way to manage cyber anymore. Yeah, uh, I, I think that it's moved a long way yeah. the, the past few years. So, uh, But I still think that, uh, you know, you, you guys, you know, being a partner to the business can actually impact the bottom line. That's absolutely If right. I'm hearing you correctly. Right. But yep. to be able to do that, you have to understand the business. You have to know how everybody works in Graphic Packaging International. We're a 25,000 employee company, yep. right? Um, our cyber team is 
45 people uh, with some outside help. Um, but how do you, how do you establish those relationships? How do you understand how each part of the business operates so that you can defend it appropriately, right? That, that takes real effort. And I think the other thing on the bucket list is innovation. Oh yeah. You never know where the next great idea will come from. And, and throughout my career, I've been surprised by, uh, members at all level of the company, right? Uh, what they're able to do sometimes given the right time to focus on a unique problem. And, and th this is always fascinating because, as you said, innovation is uh, com coming in different shapes and form. And to be honest, uh, usually from the, the people that you are not expecting. That's right. So uh, I'm happy to see more innovation coming. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. Absolutely. <laughs> to, to be honest, what we're trying to have in our company is to keep the organization as flat as possible. So the... A flow of ideas will come from everywhere. So there is no boundaries. So if you have a great idea, then go execute, show, and, and you know, and we can become better and, and stronger. So I think that this is kind of another thing that AI will affect us become kind of a little bit uh, uh, more, uh, uh, you know, s less structured organization in a sense. Yeah, I like that. I had a short stint at a startup, and to your point, um, the one, the conversations that happen during free time, right? And the wow. ideas we have thrown around and, and just drawing ideas on the wall. I mean, there's a lot of, to your point, and a good idea can come from anywhere, right? But you have to have the right environment to, to foster that. I think that uh, me and Nate, the, the base, uh, best idea that we have is when we're on the road. So th this is kind of like, maybe we will do that. And then we we're, we're become quiet for kind of uh, 10 minutes. And that's it. Just a sec. That was a great idea. <laughs> and the ability to go and implement it almost kind of right away, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. This is, to be honest, how we came up with the human work and non-human work. So it's like we looked at each other, it's like, just do human work. <laughs> and, like we, and we realized that it's like, okay, this is actually what AI will enable us to do. So we'll put that on a t-shirt. We, we have, have t-shirts. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Coming to your house shortly. <laughs> All right. So send us the address and size. Uh, so, you know, one, one thing that we like to talk about on this too is like, this is a kind of a nice segue is the impossible question of if we were to look five years into the future. Yeah. I know that's hard. I think that we need to shorten it to three years. Three years. It's like the the things are moving fast in the AI world. <laughs> Whatever it is. But in that world where we think that AI has, has hit the mainstream, specifically in cyber, um, what do you think that'll do to change the way that we approach our, our programs, our teams, our training, our any of those things? And I know it's like a really hard thing to imagine, but is there anything that stands out to you? Anything you're thinking of saying like, I know that this is going to change? That's a great question. Um, I'll tell you what I hope changes. Uh, I think automated aug like compliance auditing yeah. could be a win, right? It's hard work. Um, and even the best audit efforts, you know, have gaps in them. Right. Um, I think that that's a huge thing. Uh, I think training is another great opportunity, right? Um, understanding the environment and proposing training that matters, that's, that's real and effective. Um, so there are a lot of tools out there today that, um, they try to calculate, um, potential damages with a particular risk. And I think that at best today that it's, it's not super effective. Yeah. I don't think, I think it, it's far from accurate. But I think that AI, um, if it really understands your environment, right, mm -hmm. and where your value as a business is, right, particular assets, and even to go a further step for us as a manufacturing, like we would be able to to calculate the uptime of a particular piece of mach machinery and if it's offline, what that takes. So I think a lot of the data elements exist within modern enterprise, but um, but AI, I hope down the road would be able to really give us some effective data and, and estimates on damage. If we don't address a particular risk, right? Or if, if the time for us to address it is, is longer than expected, what that real dollar risk is to a company. Uh, basically, if I understand you correctly, it's almost kind of uh, breaking the boundaries between different data set that we have today. Right. Because today we're kind of reviewing cyber in the context of cyber. And it's very hard for us to review cyber in the context of the uh, business, as you said. That's right. That's right. Even it, there are uh, methodologies out there. FAIR is one yep. that helps to attribute dollar amounts to a given risk. Uh, but even that is very manual. I yeah. think it's, it's, um, it's more qualitative as much as it's trying to be quantitative, yep. right? It's still subjective in many ways. 
Uh, and so I think with AI, I think you could get to a much better answer to help you make real decisions based on dollars. Yeah, I think that uh, my expectation will be as a fusion of data sources that will be able to come together in order to make a decision. Uh, because you can throw in a prompt a lot of data that coming from different sources. And the nice thing about AI, you don't have to organize it in a way that, uh, or normalize it like we're doing today with the sim. It's like you can just throw everything in and the AI will be able to do some reasoning and give you a kind of what, what is the impact on a specific uh, business unit or specific machines and so on and so forth. So Right. Yeah, fantastic. If you could do that. <laughs> Working on it. <laughs> you know, we've we've looked at what AI can do in terms of saving time and, and some of the other implications, but can you think of anything just in the current tech stack that you think, well, wait a second, if AI can come in here, we can rethink of how we architect this thing or how we send data from place to place. Do you have any thoughts around just with the addition of AI, how does that change the the fundamentals of our tech stack? Yeah, sure. I th I think there will be big impacts to the future architectures and tech stacks and security compared to today. Uh, one area, the SIM, I think that as AI gets better and better, the need to house historical data for the purposes of detection and response uh, gets smaller. I think that um, potentially going to the source where, where the activity is happening and doing that extremely real time almost, um, maybe that's a solution that is not of much value in the future. Um, I also think that the defense in depth, uh, methodology, you have layered controls, many of which kind of do the same thing and they're stacked on top of each other. Um, I think that there's an opportunity there, right? Yeah. So, so if you think about the, the scene, what's happened in the past uh, almost 30 years, it started with a great idea. We had the alert that there were, it was not even alert because today we're talking about high fidelity alert. Back then it was log line that we needed to normalize and create rules in order to make them and convert them to become an alert. But that was the original idea. And since then what we're doing, we're throwing everything that we can on the scene. It's like, uh, it's a high fidelity alert, just garbage. It's like whatever it is, we're just trying to put there, normalize it and create some rules. But I agree with you 100% that it's like we have to rethink about which data should live where. And I agree with you that some of the data can live, I call it where the data was born. Right. So if it's in the cloud, it probably should stay there. And if it's the EDR, it probably should stay there. And I hope that AI will be able to go and query those data lakes instead of, you know, us trying to shift and lift tons of information to a single place. Even the lift and shift gets more expensive now because yeah. you leverage SaaS platforms that charge you for ingress or egress of log data, right? Um, and so our boundary, the traditional enterprise boundary, isn't really there in many organizations, right? You're spread across the globe in various data centers or SaaS platforms. True, and and even we're starting to count kind of how the future is going to look like, the amount of data that I think that we're going to keep generating because every year it's like we're doubling a triple, right? <laughs> so it's not going down. So I, I think that uh, I agree with kind of the thought process of we need to rethink about a new architecture of how we're thinking the cybersecurity architecture of, of a big organization, because the current is actually kind of broken. Agreed. Agreed. All right, cool. I, I, I think that's a good place to wrap it up. Okay. Um, we've talked about the future. We've talked about what's broken. We've talked about getting more sleep. And we've sleep talked is about important. interaction with people. In, you, you beat me to it. I was going to say about being more human and getting out there and talking and uh, interacting with the human beings around us. And uh, John, thanks so much for, for joining us here. This was fun. This is the first time we've been under the lights oh. in a studio. This uh, is a real cool. studio. So, uh, yeah, we appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was fun. Thank you so much.